<laughs> I said that off air so no one can get mad. <laughs> um, all right, nice to see everyone. So today, um, we're looking at a women's health article again. <laughs> Sorry, um, but it's not about women. I swear. Uh, Why don't you choose men's health? Okay, next week I'll use Men's Health magazine. <laughs> if it's like oh, how you said, like there are the same articles, then there must be the same articles that you're going to choose, right? Just type yes. the Google the reason, and find it. The reason that my food and health are always from Women's Health is because I read it. So I'll be reading and then I'll go, oh, that would be a cool class. <laughs> So um, I'll be more creative next week, okay? I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So today we're looking at the past perfect, and we're talking about um, beach illnesses and waterborne illnesses. So here's our first question. Have you ever worried about getting sick from the beach? So... We've got lots of people today. That's good. Um, who's here? So, um, could you just introduce yourself quickly and tell us if you've ever worried about getting sick from the beach? So, I'm Sam. I'm from Canada. I know you all. Yeah. I think. <laughs> um, yes, I have actually. Uh. I've been to some dirty-looking beaches <laughs> and <laughs> just kind of not been too sure about the water, but. I foolishly always go in anyways, so <laughs> I'm not a germaphobe or anything. Um, Chu, could you introduce yourself and tell us if you've ever worried about getting sick from the beach? Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chu, and uh, um, I'm from China. And I, ha I haven't worried about getting sick from the beach and the Based on my experience in the in the beach, I have never um, got sick um, after I visit uh, after I visited there. So I don't worry. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, Edward. Uh, well. Um uh, I'm. Um, well, uh, I. Uh, there, there are people like a uh, 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 person who have a, a lot of age or that uh, that are delicate with with uh, high temperatures or hot temperatures that in beach can can can, can be. Uh, uh, well, and and. Uh, we 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 can use a, a protect to, to to the sun because if you don't protect, you you, you will have a head a head stroke or or, or something else. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Good. Um. Just a note about the word temperatures. That's how we pronounce it. Temperatures. Temperatures. So it looks like temp temperatures, but it's not pronounced that way. That T U. It's sounding like a ch. Okay, temperatures. Good. Okay, thanks, Edward. Um, Christoph, what about you? Have you ever worried about getting ill from the beach? Mm, yes, uh, especially with, if you go uh, to the beach uh, without protection. Uh, you have uh, have some suntan lotion uh, mm -hmm. because you can get uh, skin cancer. Yep, good point. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is casual uh, disease uh, on some beaches in uh, Australia uh, and uh, countries like uh, that uh, that have uh, uh, a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. So this is important to uh, use some protection okay. to go to the beaches. Yeah, good point. There's a different type of illness, right? Skin cancer. So it's not only about the water, it's also about keeping your skin healthy. Um, Liliana, what about you? Uh, maybe, um, once I... Oh, we can't hear you again. <laughs> now? Now? Yep. 
Yeah, it's better. Okay. And yes, I remember uh, once I was um, uh, one of our beaches and I had an, an allergy, allergy because of the seafood. Uh, so uh, sometimes if the food is not it's not fresh. Uh, maybe you can have a, a stomach infection mm -hmm. or allergies because of the food. And, uh, okay, so Liliana, you would say, I had an allergic reaction to the seafood. Uh, okay. And okay. then you would say, I have a seafood allergy. Okay, I had okay. a seafood allergy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Yes, so so uh, the actual instant um, incident is your allergic reaction, like when you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Or sometimes when uh, some foreign people suffer from uh, stomach uh, stomach infections mm -hmm. um, because of the water or of the seafood. So you have to uh, uh, make sure you carry with you uh, some uh, uh, pills or, uh, I don't know, Med uh, medicaments to avoid them or to help uh, with this uh, uh, illness? Mm -hmm. We call it a, a stomach infection is correct, but we call it a stomach bug a lot of the time uh, in casual kind of speech. Like you would say there's a bug going around, uh -huh. stomach bug, the stomach flu. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, okay, Lorenzo, what about you? Have you ever been worried about getting sick from the beach? Mm, yes, one time. Um, one of the beach here is in the city, in the main city. So that beach is uh, polluted. Can I say? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, because all the water, the all the the water from from the hotel, from different hotels uh, gathered in that beach, um, it is polluted. Um, some some swimmer. Have some swimmers have been sick because of that? Because uh, it, it is a good beach because it has a very high wave. It's good for surfer. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they get sick because of the uh, skin reaction or something like that. So right. that's the reason. It is a very risky beach. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um. What about you, Luis? Yeah, it's, I, I always concern about the, the disease by uh, the disease from the water and the sand because sometimes not the, in Rio de Janeiro the beach is not all clean. But my most concern is about the, as Christopher said, the cancer disease because the the cancer the skin cancer is a a disease in my family. Okay. I have a genetic predispo predisposition. 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 Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful with my exposure uh, under the sun. Mm -hmm. Exposure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, that's a hard one to pronounce. Genetic predisposition, or you can just say it's hereditary. 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 Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So you have to be careful. Wear lots of sunscreen. Um, yes. What about you, Luisa? No, I am no sick from the beach. I like sea, I like beaches. <laughs> but uh, I'm just uh, worried about sun death because after it, I am always look like crayfish and red, so that's all the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, and Furkin, what about you? Okay. okay. So my brother is bugging me. Uh, actually, I didn't have any problems with beach because all the problems coming from sea, pool, or sun. I have a light skin, so I have to be careful about sun because I remember many times after a uh, three-hour long uh, sun exposure, my skin burns and I suffered for days, maybe weeks. Also sometimes in pools they put uh, lots of chlorine in it in chlorine. order to make... How do you read it? Chlorine. Chlorine, okay. And 
it makes my eyes like bloodshot and I really don't like it. It hurts a lot. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe I have some kind of problem with after I leave pools, I have some kind of stomach issues like I have a stomach ache and intestines. They all stop working and <laughs> causing problems. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So do, do you swallow the water or something? <laughs> Is that what Definitely. happens? You're swimming with your mouth open? <laughs> well, I still don't know how to get rid of that. You know, when you're diving into the sea, water always comes into your nose and you definitely swallow it. I don't know how to remove that. I can't do all the time. Do that all the time. Plug your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna buy some too. Oh, I know what you need. Let me what? show you. I can prevent you need, it. You need one of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> You're not a shark. Samantha, <laughs> <laughs> okay. breathe, breathe for for her nose, for his <laughs> nose. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, there's always the danger of swallowing or inhaling too much water. <laughs> um, Victor, what about you? Have you ever been concerned about getting ill from the beach? Uh, no. I think uh, going to the beach might be stronger in uh, all mean. And people live along the beach, uh, they're usually very strong. Mm -hmm. And they're healthy, they, uh, they had no problem with skin cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you think because you know a lot of people who are who live on the beach that have never had any trouble, so it doesn't really concern you too much? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so let's take a look at our pronunciation point for today. Um, so how often do you guys hear us speaking with the past perfect? First of all, does anyone know what the past perfect looks like? Can yes. someone give me an example? I had been... English in Europe. Good. So I had been studying. Studying English, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or that would be um, in the continuous form. What about in the simple form? I had studied. I had studied. Good. I had swim. Good. Um, but when we're saying this out loud, we don't usually say, well, we do sometimes, but we don't usually pronounce I had. Um, the I had tends to glide together and it almost turns into like a, a Y or a W sound depending on what comes before the had. So for example, I had already eaten. Listen when I say it, I had already eaten. Do you hear an H? I had already eaten. I had already eaten. I'd already eaten. So I'm almost saying I'd. Louise is only hearing ad, right? You're, you don't really hear the H. Yeah. Right? So what's happening between the I and the had is it's, it's doing this. I ad, I ad, I ad. It's turning into kind of like a Y sound. I had already eaten. I ad. So it looks like that kind of. Like that, mm. I add. Um, and it sounds kind of like a Y. There's like a Y there to, to join the two sounds. Can or for example. You jot down this with contraction? I'd? Yeah, or, yeah, exactly. So it's either that or it's I'd, right? It's either I add, where it's kind of blending, or it's I'd. It's, it's mm. one or the other, usually, with our speech. We don't usually say, I had already eaten. You don't really pronounce it that much naturally when you speak. had. No, no, but if you uh, are writing, you can uh, use I'd contraction. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you pronounce it the same way as you contract I would, in the same way you pronounce I'd. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd can be used for I would or I had. Like, I'd have. 
um, or I'd have a million dollars if I won the lottery, right? I would have, I'd have, versus I'd already eaten, I had already eaten. It's the same contraction for both. Okay. And it's okay in written English to do I'd, that's fine. Um, oh, this is a general case that um, when I meet with a H sound and uh, we will add a E between the two words and uh, there's no exceptions. Exception. What yeah. do you mean if you're adding an E? Unlike IAT, IAT, you don't I speak, uh, the H is voiceless. Voiceless. Yeah. And uh, this is a general case or it's just a special for I had. Um, so it's with I had, it, when we turn it into like this one, it sounds like a W sound. Sue, Sue hadn't heard the phone, turned it turns into Sue hadn't heard the phone. Uh. Sue hadn't heard the phone. So again, we're losing our H, but, but in this case it sounds like this. So it depends on the word that comes before the hadn't, whether it's a Y or a W sound. Um, and it's not, it's not um, a huge pronunciation rule. It's more just something that you'll hear when native speakers are speaking at a natural speed. We, we just blend our words together. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this is one of the ways that we do that by dropping letters like H's. So. See, we, we can learn this one by one. So. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Sam. It is the same pronunciation. You said uh, when you we use had and um, would. I mean the contraction is the same I'd, pronunciation. I'd. I'd. Yeah. Okay. Same contraction, same pronunciation for I'd. Yeah. Um, his dad had ordered the pizza. His dad had ordered the pizza. What's happening? His dad had ordered the pizza. Is that? Uh, that the D is uh, was listening to this. Right, text. it sounds like this, right? Dadded. <laughs> the dadded. H is disappearing, right? His dad had ordered the pizza. Um, her sister hadn't done her homework. 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 So when I say it quickly, um, the H disappears again. Her sister added. It's mute. Yeah. I'm muted. Sorry. Uh -huh. Her sister added. Her sister hadn't, or quickly. Her sister hadn't done her homework. I have to say it quickly, or you can't really hear it the way that you will hear it in the movies or something. So yeah, we tend to drop the H when we're pronouncing. If there's a vowel before it, it, it can turn into a a, w, a W sound. Um, and sometimes if uh, a W or a Y sound, if there's a vowel before it. Um, I'm going to get you each to just say this one sentence once, and then we'll go to our grammar, okay? Mm -hmm. I had already eaten. Try to say I had instead of I'd. Like I had this. already eaten. I had already eaten. I had already eaten. I had um, already two? eaten. Okay. Shoe? Okay. Um, I had already eaten. Perfect. Edward? I had already eaten. Good. Christoph? I had already eaten. Liliana? I had already eaten. Lorenzo? I had already eaten. Again? I had already eaten. You're saying I'd, which is okay. I had already eaten. I had already eaten. Good. Luis? I had already eaten. Good. Furkan's couch. <laughs> um, Victor? I had already eaten. I had already eaten. Okay, good. So just bear that in mind while we're doing this, that when you're speaking, your, your H will almost always drop off of had. Okay? Unless you're saying things slowly. Um, any questions about that sound? 
Okay, so let's take a look at the document here for Past Perfect. Let me know if you're in. Yes, okay, good. We'll go over this quickly and then we'll read our article. Okay, so Past Perfect. Um, we use the Past Perfect when there are two events that both happened at different times in the past. And you want to show which happened first. So we also often use it with the simple past in the same sentence or adjacent sentences. What does that mean? Adjacent? The following sentence? Yeah, next to each other. Um, my boss invited me to lunch, but I had already eaten. I thought I had bought everything I needed for the camping trip. I thought I had bought everything I needed. Um, but the night before the trip, I saw that I didn't have a sleeping bag. So we use them in tandem a lot of the time together, the past perfect and past simple. Um, so how we form it, your subject, had, and your past participle. I had worked for 10 years. In the negative, you just add not, right? Your subject had not, your past participle. My sister had not done her homework. Or what does had not turn into? Hadn't. Okay. Hadn't. 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 Good. Hadn't. Um, there's another pronunciation note. Listen to how I say it. Had. Hadn't. Hadn't. I'm not hadn't. really pronouncing the T, right? Hadn't. hadn't. It, it almost sounds like this. Hadn't. Hadn't. Very light T at the end. Hadn't. Okay. Um, my sister hadn't done her homework, or my sister had not done her homework. Um, to make it continuous, you use your subject, had been, your verb, and ing. Right? Same as the present perfect, except it's had been this time. I had been sleeping when he called. I'd been sleeping when he called is also fine. I'd been sleeping when he called. I had been sleeping. Um, it's very similar um, to the use of the past continuous. We use it with the simple past to show a past action that was in progress when it was interrupted by another more recent action that is also now in the past. I'm going to show you guys those timelines again for this tense afterwards, but first we'll look at some examples. So, I had been dancing for six hours when I passed out. The police came after the party had been going on for two days. So both actions are in the past, right? This one, oops, this one happened first, and it was interrupted by her passing out, <laughs> okay? So there was a party going on. The police came and interrupted the party. Both of these things are in the past. So if we go over here... Um. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, you, you, uh, could you yeah show the um, mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what is the sentence um, um, going to the first and the last. Like uh, the first the first sentence, I have been dancing for six hours is before the adjustment uh, sentence, and uh, in the next we. Oh put right. The, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. You can put them in either place in the sentence, it's just going to depend on what you use to join the two things. Okay, so the police came after the party. The after indicates that, that this happened first, the party, right? So it depends on the, on the action's time, which one is the first one and the, which one is the second. You can put, you can put the had been clause first or second in the sentence. It um, doesn't matter where it is in the sentence. Um, the had been is indicating that it happened first. Yeah. And the, the past simple indicates that that happened second. Okay, so you it's just depending on the word here that you're using to join them. That's how you make sense of the sentence, but okay. it doesn't matter to you because the had been dancing, we, as soon as we see had been, we know that it, it came first. 
Yes. So it can be there or here. It doesn't matter. Okay? Okay. Um, so I wanted to show you this timeline just um, to kind of clarify. So past perfect, completed action before something else, right? So I had never seen such a beautiful beach before I went to Kaui. Kaui. I did not have any money because I had lost my wallet. So we've got two actions. Both of them are in the past, but we use had been for this one, the first one that happened. Both completed actions in the past. Okay? Had been is the dot, and the past simple is the X. Um, for the past perfect continuous? So usually we, when we use the past the past perfect sentence, we need to add another sentence um, as a following. If we just yeah. say one sentence, we couldn't use past past a perfect um, sentence, right? Yeah, unless it's implied by the context or the conversation, um, you do need to kind of tell us what the other thing is that's happening. So. If it's implied in the conversation, like you guys have been talking for a while about, um, for example, maybe we're saying, um, let's see, Tony knew Istanbul so well because he had visited the city several times. So we might say, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example conversation. <laughs> but if you're, if you're talking with a friend and you, you guys have been talking for a while about how well someone knew a city, then you might kind of just use the past perfect solo, um, but that's only because we already know what the other action is. So, yes. so you do need to either imply it or it should be there. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. Thank you. And past perfect is a uh, past before the past simple. Pardon? Um, past perfect is a past before the past simple. Right. Uh -huh always before past simple. Right, so the past perfect is here. Oh, this might be backwards for you guys. The past perfect is, is first and then something interrupts it uh -huh. or make for some reason it stops and that's the past simple, the action that happened afterwards. Okay. But all of it's in the past, right? Mm -hmm. The past before the past. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, any questions about how that works, about the past perfect? It's clear? It's okay? Yeah, it's mm, it's okay. Alright, I'll give you guys this link again. Um, if this is something you need practice with, lots of practice down here, okay? Um, Alright, let's take a look. And read what you wrote. Why don't uh, conditionals? If I had studied, I would have. Yeah, that's a different class. <laughs> no, yeah, we use the we use it in the conditional as well. If I had studied, I would have passed. Right. If I had eaten my lunch, I wouldn't have been so hungry. Okay. Um. So here's our article. Did I give you the link? No. Guess what? It comes from Women's Health Magazine. <laughs> Who would have guessed that, right? Hey, um, hey Gary. <laughs> I promise I'll be creative next week and choose a different, <laughs> different magazine. Um, is the beach making you sick? Um, okay. A new report from the Natural Resources Defense Council sheds light on the risk of getting a waterborne illness from the ocean. Here's how to minimize your odds of getting sick. Before you hit the beach this 4th of July, you should know that there's something in the water, literally. Beaches across the U.S. had more than 20,000 closing and advisory days in 2012 due to water pollution or contamination threats, according to the 23rd Annual Beach Water Quality Report, just released by the Natural Resources Defense Council, NRDC. As if that weren't disturbing enough, more than 80% of the closings and advisories occurred because testing revealed unsafe bacteria levels in the water. 
The NRDC also found that 7% of the water quality samples taken by the beaches last year failed to meet the federal public health standard set by the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. This is consistent with the percentage of samples that contained too much pollution to meet these standards in the last few years. Um, then they kind of go on with a few different headings. What's making it so gross? Um, they're saying that high levels of pollution are probably a big part of it, right? And they kind of go on. Um, sewage pipes, right? So sewage, sewage leaks carrying human waste out to the ocean. That's part of it. Um, they're telling us how it's making us sick, questioning if it's safe. If you see a sign, you should heed it. Um, but paying attention to these notices won't necessarily protect you. <laughs> um, so they don't always have a notice up, right? Should you avoid the beach? So we'll talk about all of this um, in our conversation, but I'm just going to scroll back up. Do you see any vocabulary, any new words you want me to explain here in the first part? Sewage. What does it mean? Sewage. What is sewage? That thing. So that thing, the, the tooth, that water, uh, water, pollution water flow in the street. This is sewage. So it's, it's, it's waste from the bathroom. Oh. Yes. Okay. okay. Stink. Always All stink. All liquidated. Li uh, li not liquidated. Um, turned it's liquid. Ah, okay. And, um, and sometimes oh. there are sewage leaks into oceans and things like that. Mm -hmm. They, hmm. yeah. Uh, I want to ask uh, what, how how to use uh, literally, literally and uh, technically. Okay, good, good question. Yeah. So before you hit the beach this 4th of July, you should know there's something in the water, literally. What does literally mean? You guys will hear it used the wrong way all the time, okay? I'm warning you. <laughs> People use it in English to emphasize things, but that's not the correct way to use it. It's not meant to be a word of emphasis. Um, so what, when should we use it? Yeah, it means like in the dictionary meaning like, for example, you're talking about something and you're saying literally because that's really happening. Right. So what, what they're saying here, I'm just going to... There's something in the water Literally. The reason they're saying literally is because there's a figurative meaning for something in the water. Like an expression where you say, oh, there's something in the water. There's something fishy going on, something strange. That's an expression. And so they're saying literally to say, not the expression, there really is something in this water. So it's the diction, to, or to show that you're using the dictionary definition, the real definition versus figuratively when you use something figuratively you're using the expression okay so if I say there's something in the water pollution like there's actually literally something in the water um, technically we use a little bit differently so I would say like this We usually say, like, technically, you shouldn't go to the beach, but I know you will. So technically, we, in this sort of context, we tend to use it to say there's a rule that you should be following. Technically, there's a rule, oh, but, but you're probably going to break it. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense to you? Mm. A little Still bit. a little bit confused. Uh, uh, if we have time, I think we can. Everyone could put an example, and you can to examine what we understand it or not. I don't sure. know whether we have the time. Yeah. Specifically for literally or for technically or both. Uh, both. Everyone could choose. I think they have uh, options here. Okay. Can anyone think of another example where we could use literally? Mm. Mm. There's a fly. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, the guy. Fine. 
<laughs> if I say like, uh, if I put an example like this, um, in ancient Europe, um, people say, people thought that uh, the Earth is is square, um, literally is a round, uh, is a round, is a is a ball, is shape is a ball. I can say it like this. Okay, so you could say the Earth is. I'm hot, literally. <laughs> so if if I say, "Oh, I'm so hot," and you go, "Oh, okay, you're so full of yourself, you're so cocky," then I go, "No, really, I'm hot. It's hot outside, right?" <laughs> so when there's two different meanings for a word, chew. There's the literal, real meaning, like it's physically warm out, versus I am so attractive, <laughs> right? So. Mm. People might say, I'm hot. Literally. Really. I'm hot. It, it's hot outside. Right? Uh, so it's um, just an exercise with what I said before. Like, I'm hot. I want to express that I'm truly very hot. That's the meaning of literature. literally. I'm, tr I'm truly warm. I'm truly the, warm. the real meaning of hot. Not... Oh, oh, I see. Attractive. About temperature, not yeah. uh, temperature. hot chip. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get too stuck on this point, so I'll send you a message after to try to clarify it a little bit better in writing. Okay, okay thank you. you. Okay. Um, all right, so let's take a look at some of our discussion. Um, okay. Could people have done to present to prevent themselves from getting illnesses at the beach? What are some preventative measures? What could they have done? Uh, oh, I imagine not, they can get a suntan lotion uh, against uh, uh, cancer on suntan burn. Mm-hmm. They should have worn sun lo suntan lotion. Different ways to say it, okay? Suntan lotion. Sunscreen. Black sun. Ah, or sunblock. Sunblocker. Suntan sun lotion, sunscreen, sunblock. They're all the same thing. Okay. Um, I think they can um, find information about the beach they will visit if, uh, if their ocean's uh, water is qualified to to with it, I think um, this will be the good for him for them to go. Mm -hmm. So do some research before they go to make sure it's clean. Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. What else could they have done? Not to visit it. <laughs> Those dangerous beaches. Uh, to use out some blocker. The sunblock. better way, sunblock. some black, some black. Mm -hmm. UV, UV protector. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's another question. Have you ever considered yourself to be a germaphobe? Do you know anyone who is? Um, and does this relate to this particular topic, being a germaphobe? First of all, what is a germaphobe? It's slang, really. It's not a real disease. It's, it's like a, it's like a when someone want to don't want to touch anything because they don't want to be contaminated. Yeah, That's it? someone who is like afraid Mr. of Mr. Monk. I, I, I'm always watching the, their hands. Um, yeah. Using uh, it's a, a white liquid. How do you say? What is the name of the liquid? Soap? No. Soap? Hand sanitizer. Yes, yeah, sanitizer. Always, that kind of people are germaphobe. Yeah, to be to be infected or to be contagious from something. Yeah, they're worried about getting infected, right? Mm -hmm. What does OCD mean? Obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder. What is that? <laughs> does it? <laughs> It is a disease. <laughs> if someone if someone has OCD, what what are they like? How do they act? They keep cleaning everything. 
Yeah, like some. I, I have Phobia. that Jack Nicholson movie. Yeah, like that. It's a film. Ah, yes. I forgot the name uh -huh. in English. Uh -huh. It's kind of phobia. Yeah, it's a type of phobia. So if you are obsessive with something, you are obsessed mm. with it, right? You have things have to be the way you want them to. If you're compulsive, you can't stop doing something. You can't stop yourself from doing something. You just jump into it. So if you're obsessive mm. compulsive, <laughs> You're just constant, like everything has to be clean or hmm. your shoes have to be in order by color and size or something, crazy things hmm. like that. So being a germaphobe can sometimes be considered kind of OCD. So have you ever considered yourself to be a germaphobe or do you know anyone who is? Yeah, I know. Hmm. Tell us about that, Ferkin. Yeah, for example, my grandma is like that. Whenever we comes to his, her home, she always makes us uh, remove everything that we bring with, like, uh, we have to take a shower whenever we come to our house. And she has to clean every step that we take. She believes that we are uh, bringing all the dirt with from outside. And she's always cleaning, always. Like, the, the floor is always wet. And you can see... Uh, any place or dishes not being done. That's crazy. So the kitchen is always like spotless. <laughs> All everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone else know someone who is a germaphobe or are you a little bit of a germaphobe? Hmm. Lorenzo? My, my sister, my older sister, my older sister. Is exaggerating always <laughs> with everything. Um, sometimes uh, she has to maintain the whole house. Um, can I say cozy or impeccable? Impeccable, so perfectly clean. Yes, yes, incredible. Always touching the windows to see if there any any dust on it. <laughs> uh, you, I, I can live like that. <laughs> I, I'm a clean man, but I'm, I'm not so clean to be like that. <laughs> not that clean, right? Not that clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will not get in sick like, uh, if I if I live like if I live like that. Mm -hmm. Um. What about you, um, Christoph? Are you a germaphobe? No, I'm not. <laughs> Maybe little uh, Germanophobe. A what? <laughs> Maybe little uh, Germanophobe. Great song. <laughs> mm. <Ooh. laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, Liliana, really... are you a Germaphobe? Uh, no, but I, um, one of my friends, uh, I think when someone visits. Uh, after someone visit, uh, visited her home, he cleaned uh, everything with alcohol. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> and a toothbrush? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <it's> crazy. <laughs> what about you? Are you ever germaphobe-ish? No, I think I'm normal. <laughs> I like to be uh, an older woman, but not in, in this extreme any sort of germophobia that I ever had disappeared when I started working with kids. So yeah. <laughs> they're so dirty and messy, like wiping their nose and uh, <laughs> like wipe their nose on your shirt. You're like, oh come on, <laughs> like three year olds. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's another question. As a child, did you prefer swimming in a pool at a beach or not at all? Like, for example, when I was a kid, um, we used to always go to the public pool. I don't know if you guys have public pools where you are, but it would be a really big pool with a yeah. lot of chlorine. It would be, like, green. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there would be a lot of people in it. 
And we would go sometimes, but as I got older, I got so grossed out by it. Like, oh, this is awful. There would be like 50 people in the pool, and you're like, oh, that guy probably just peed beside me. Like, I guess. <laughs> <I can't laughs> so we used to do that, and then um, I, I don't know. I stopped do going to public pools, and I used to go to the beach more often. Now we have a pool, so. But I, mean, I like. You're not when you notice the what, what what is the problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so what about you guys have, mm, prefer have, you ever, swim have you ever swam in a public pool first <laughs> and oh. then what do you prefer for swimming uh edward well well um um for for the, for the kids I, I think it's be, it's it's better to go to to a pool because it's more safely than a, than the beach. You think the public pool is safer? Yeah, it's safer than than the beach. Than the beach? Why? Be, 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 because the uh, the 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 kids are are controlled by 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 what what wardens are, are controlled and and and. And and the, the the water is more clean. It's it's it's, it's more clean. It. Okay. So because of all the chlorine, it's cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Um. And what? Yeah. Treated water, Lorenzo. Treated water. Yes. Treated. Mhm. Mm so, Edward, where would you prefer to swim when you were a kid? Uh. I, well, I, I prefer I, when I was a kid. I prefer a beach because it's more it's more fun. It's the, the it's more open. Uh, it's more uh, you can you can play with uh, uh, we, 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 we can play the volleyball or or, or the beach sports and it's, it's more fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, beach volleyball is fun. Um, okay, Christoph, what about you? Have you ever... I go every week to swim pool. I... We have public swim. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, on the roof, so I don't know what you mentioned. If it's a pool open or on the roof. Okay. So do you, did you prefer to go to the public pool or did you like the beach better when you were younger? Uh, you know, I have uh, pool I have here, but if I want to go to beach, I have to go through the country. I am on south and <laughs> the beaches are <laughs> uh, uh, on the sea. So is on the north, so you, I have to go through the country to go to beaches. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a, a choice. Not a, not as accessible, right? <laughs> okay, Liliana, what about you? Uh, I prefer to go to the beach uh, first because it has uh, running water. Uh, it's not a, I don't know if I say stagnant water. Uh, it has what kind of water? Uh, running, running water. Running water. Yes, and uh, I think it's um, it's it's, more, uh, it's fun. Uh, you have uh, more fun to go to the beach mm -hmm. uh, instead of uh, swimming in the pool, and um, because you can. Um, one of the uh, things that I like because you you can see the uh, the sunset. And uh, mm -hmm. the landscape and uh, people and uh, yeah, I will try to go to the beach. And have you ever swam in in a public pool full of people and chlorine? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, never. You, is that a thing in Spain or not really? And in Spain, no, I live in Colombia. Oh, sorry, in Colombia, not Spain. Uh, uh, yes, there are a lot of uh, park with uh, public. Uh, swimming pools, but uh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> I prefer to go to the beach, and um, yes, I think it's, and it's more relaxing uh, mm -hmm. for okay. yourself. Yeah. And um, oh, hi Osama. When did you sneak in? 
is no. Have you been here for a while? <laughs> I yes. haven't heard anything from you yet. You're so quiet. He was here, just listening. Osama, <laughs> um, have you ever swam in in a public pool? Well, uh, I don't think so. Maybe uh, uh, with, uh, in the public pool with my friends, like a party or something like that. But I prefer, I think, uh, uh, a beach because uh, it's more big and uh, free, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let's do some um, practice here. I'd like you guys to make a sentence in the past perfect using the verb that I give you, okay? We're going to go backwards this time. So let's start with Victor. You ready? Victor? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Hate. A sentence in the past perfect with hate. Uh, in the past perfect. Before I uh, I had been hated before I turned twenty. You had hated? What did what had you you had hated I, what? I had been. Uh, you got passive voice. Okay. Yeah. You had been being hated, hated? Yeah. by by people? Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay, before you turn 20? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> when you turn 20, people started to like you? <laughs> okay, thanks, Victor. Um, uh, Osama, a sentence with eat. Uh, eat, okay. Uh, I had uh, never eating uh, a walk. Yes. You had eaten uh, I had I had never eaten uh, a worm, I guess. Oh, I have never eaten a worm. Or you could say, I hadn't eaten a worm until yesterday. <laughs> now I have eaten a worm. <laughs> um, Furkan, can you make one with a study? OK. I hadn't studied. I hadn't studied? Ah, give. <laughs> you keep giving the same verb to me. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, um, dig. Okay, dig, dug, dug, right? Yes. Okay, I had dug a grave after before I puked. I had dug a grave. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. Um, Luis? Um, jog. Jog. I, I'd been jogging when you <coughs> arrived. Good. Perfect. I'd been jogging when you arrived. Good. Lorenzo? Yes. Um, make. Make. Mm -hmm. Uh... I'd made uh, a cake wh when you came yesterday. I'd made a cake. I made a cake. I'd okay. made a cake. I would probably say I'd um, I'd been making a cake when you came because you're interrupt. Someone. It sounds okay. like someone interrupted your action. Okay. Of I'd been making. I was making a cake when you arrived yesterday. I'd been making a cake. Okay, good. Um, Liliana? Mm -hmm. um, what's another verb? Do. Okay. Um, I'd, uh, I don't. Uh, the, the homework before my mother arrived home. 
I'd done my homework. Uh -huh. For my good. mother, all right. Okay, perfect. I had done. Good. Um, Christoph? One. Hmm. Hmm. I had wanted a uh, new iPhone uh, before uh, it came on the market. <laughs> Okay, good. And Edward? Um. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, mm, mm, uh, my, uh, the, the teacher uh, has, uh, has teached, no, has taught. Uh, uh, the uh, all 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 the lessons. Good. The teacher had taught. Had taught. Um, you could say the teacher had taught twenty lessons. And, uh, uh, in uh, in in uh, 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 for uh, since since uh, since uh, for. Since last last year. Okay, so you would say the teacher has taught twenty lessons since last year, or you could say the teacher had taught twenty lessons um, last year when she um, quit her job or something. So you need to use the the past simple as well to show that two things in the past happened. It, otherwise, if you say she has taught 20 lessons. It sounds like she's still teaching. Yeah, good, Christoph, and when she had retired. That sounds better. Um, okay? Okay. Okay, good. Um, any questions for me, guys? No, it's clear. Mm, it's clear. Cool. All right. Um, here's all of my links. I'm gone for an hour, and then I'll be back for... What are we doing? At for... 11. Travel? No. History. We're talking about daydreaming today. Okay? So come join me. Hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Okay? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye.